Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at how you can use multiple scenes to do motion graphics in Blender. Let's get started. Okay, so this is something I wanted to talk about because I, I don't really don't see many videos out about this and it's really kind of, I don't know, out of this box uh, feature that uh, you can do some really interesting stuff with Blender in and um, I thought I'd uh, highlight it because I was using it just, just last night. I was doing a project for a client and uh, had a shot and I needed to do this, I needed to have, uh, I needed to have some text on the screen. And this was the perfect solution for it. So I thought, hey, this is a great example just to give you guys an idea of how you could be using this in your own projects. So let me show you what we're gonna do. I've got a little scene here. Now this is a scene uh, from a project that I've just been working on for a client. Um, I've just changed it a little bit, gotten rid of all like the copyright stuff. So this is just a couple of uh, free assets. I've got these cars here, um, which are just some free uh, free assets that I got online. So I'll, um, I can post a link to where I downloaded this so that you can get a hold of this. Um, and I've just got some simple buildings that I've modeled. Um, and the idea behind this shot was they wanted this world that is uh, sort of a white sort of expanse. So I'll just jump into the camera so you can see we've got this white expanse. So I got this shot flying through the city. It was really nice dramatic overhead. And we've got this car, a hero car that's got the signal coming out of it. And I need to have some text pop up on screen, right? So I need to have some text come down here and say like, you know, I don't know, uh, sensor detection or something, you know, it needs to say something, you know, um, you know I, could, I could make some text, I could make a text object, right? And I could parent it to my camera and I could shrink it right down and put it really close to my camera and I could create a material to make it fade on. Uh, but that might intersect the, the ground. It could intersect the car because you can see we're getting really close to stuff. In fact, it would definitely be intersecting this blue ring thing, right? So it's going to run into that. And there's all these problems that having this text in the scene is going to cause for me. Now, I could go into like After Effects afterwards and like add that text in or go into Natron and do it there or Resolve using Fusion, do it there. But I didn't really have a lot of time and I, I couldn't be bothered going into another program. I kind of just wanted to do it all right here in Blender. I just wanted to have some text pop up in a cool way and fade off and that was it. So how would you do that if you don't want it to intersect? If you don't want it to interact with your scene, what do you do? Well. You use the power of multiple scenes. Let me show you how to do it. In order to do this, the first thing we need to do, there's a couple of things we need to be using, all right? We need to, we're gonna need to use the compositor and we're gonna need to use a, another scene, okay? So let's get the second scene set up and then I'll set up the compositor and you'll start to see how this all flows together. So I've got up here, this is the scene box right up here. This is, the, this is telling me the name of this scene. You know, I could change this, right? I can call this my hero scene. This is the main scene that I'm working on, but there's this little button here next to it, just like with materials and stuff. And I can click this and it gives me the option to make a new scene, copy settings, link copy or full copy. So a full copy is going to make an entire copy of this current scene, duplicate it and pop it over into a new scene so I can do more stuff to it. Link copy, everything's linked. So whatever I do in one scene, it's going to happen in the other. And uh, copy settings is just going to take settings over. But new is what I want. I'm just going to start with a fresh scene. All right, I'm going to get out of rendered view and turn my grid back on. So here we are in a fresh scene. So this is like starting a new Blender project, right? Except it's living inside of my main scene, right? So I've got these two scenes now. I'm gonna call this my text supers. If you're not familiar, super is the official term for a text that appears on screen, usually in the lower third of the, the frame. It's called the super. All right, so now let's, uh, let's start off, let's create some text. So shift A and text. I'm just focusing on it and let's rotate it on the X 90 degrees and let's turn around so we're actually looking at it correctly. And let's say, um, all right, uh, what should we say? Uh, that's a great, I love that, groundbreaking supers. I mean, it's a great text. I would definitely want that in this video. It really sells it, I think. Uh, we've, got some, we've got some groundbreaking supers here. I'm gonna shift A, I'm gonna create a camera. Fun fact, did you notice when we created a new scene and jumped into it, it is like starting fresh in Blender, except there was no default cube and there was no camera and there was no point light. Creepy. It feels a little weird, doesn't it? Like not having those things there when you start a fresh scene. It's a bit like, I think I know where I am, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back into my camera. I'm gonna lock my camera to view. Ka-ching. Ka-ching. I'm going to go here and I'm gonna set my rotation. I'm just gonna flatten things out. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this camera. We don't need any perspective on this. I'm gonna make it orthographic. All right, and now I'm gonna take it and I can change my orthographic scale or I could just take my text, scale it down. 
and position it however I want. Now I want these supers to kind of appear down in the lower part of my, my, my screen, kind of like this. All right. And uh, let's get a material going for these guys. So I'm going to click new and I'm going to go for an emission material because I just kind of want it to be just a bright, bright color. I'll go for a bright red. Let me switch to rendered view. That's pretty good. Um, I could put a bit of glow on it. Um, and yeah, there we go. Now I want this, I want this text to fade on, right? I want to do something with that. So let's create a little, uh, little extra bit for this. So I'm going to create a texture coordinate node. I'm going to create a mapping node. I'm going to create a color ramp over, and I'm also going to create a gradient texture. I'm going to take my texture coordinate and I will pipe it into, I think I'll use the object coordinate into the vector, vector into the gradient texture here. I'll take the factor or the color, doesn't really matter, the gradient texture into the color ramp and then the color into, uh, let's see, I'm gonna actually go for a, I'm gonna create a transparent BSDF and a mix shader. I'll explain these in a second. So, um, and I'll use this as the factor and I'll put this into that one there. Okay, so what's going on here? We've got two different shaders. The emission shader is what creates the glow. Transparent is just a different shader. It's a very simple shader that just makes things see through. Um, and then the mix shader is a, another shader that allows you to mix shaders based on a factor. And I've created a gradient. So we use the texture coordinate, telling Blender how to place this texture onto our object. I've put this mapping node in, but it's not doing anything at all. I can hit M to mute it, and it's not going to change how things look because the mapping node's just there so I can have some extra control later if I want to move things around. This is then being piped into the gradient texture, which generates a gradient. Um, and because we've got a texture coordinate going into it, it knows how to kind of place it. And this doesn't always land the way you want it to, so you have to kind of use a mapping node to move it around before you can see it sometimes because um, sometimes it's like got the gradient off the material and you have to kind of shift it around. And the color ramp's just here to give us a little bit extra control. And then that's being fed into this factor, which is a slider, which determines how much of each of these we're gonna show. So wherever we've got black, uh, we're gonna be showing one of these and wherever we've got white, we'll show the other one. And it would kind of transition between the two. So that's what's happening there. And then all that goes into the material output. Now, what we need to do uh, first, because we're in EV, is I actually need to turn on some extra options. so we. Bring out the little side menu by clicking that tiny little hidden arrow. You can also hit the N key. And I'm gonna go options down at the bottom, the last tab, and we're gonna set the blend mode to alpha blend or hash, doesn't really matter. We're gonna turn shadows off because we don't need that and we'll turn off show back face. Um, so now it will actually be transparent. You can check that as well by coming over here to your render tab and film and transparent. And that will show you wherever you got this box thing, that means that it's a transparent image. So. You can see without that, um, if I go opaque, that's what it was looking like before. You just couldn't see. Um, and alpha hashed, by the way, that's the difference. You kind of see it's got some like noise to it. You may not be able to see that with the YouTube compression. Okay, so uh, we've got this you know simple gradient now. And now what I can do is I can use my mapping node to animate this on and off. Okay. So groundbreaking supers. I mean, that's so cool. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and animate this. Uh, I'm gonna turn it right here. I'll set a keyframe. I'll come forward a little bit in, in our in our timeline. I'll just hit play right here maybe. Uh, and I'll hit I to set a keyframe for the location of this mapping node. I'll come forward a little bit and then I'll drag this so that it appears. There we go. Not too far, just a little bit because I want it to, there we go. I'm gonna let it stay for a little while and then I'll hit another fact. I'm gonna switch to my dope sheet, select the node, um, select the object, then select the node. There it is. If you can't find it, you can also turn this off. This is only shows selected. So, anyways, I can take this keyframe, shift D to duplicate, drag it out. You get this solid orange color because it means this these keyframes are exactly the same as these keyframes. It's just a visual indicator that nothing's changing. And then I can duplicate this one, bring it over here. So now it's going to fade back off. Okay, so we got a cool super that fades on, fades off. Lovely. What do we do with this? All right, so the next step, let's head back over to our hero scene. And what I need to do now is I'm going to take um, my panel over here where I've got my shader editor. I'm going to switch over to the compositor. And I'm going to click Use Notes. I'm also going to double check. It's in the second tab in the uh, 
Output Properties tab, come right down, make sure that compositing is turned on. It should turn on automatically, but just in case, just double check there, because that will then make sure that when you're finishing your scene and rendering, it will pipe things through the compositor. All right, so we just need to find where's our stuff. I'll hit A to select all and the full stop key to zoom in, and there's nothing here. Okay, fine. Let's, uh, let's go, first we need a render layer node. And then we need a composite node. These should automatically be here for you. I'm not sure why mine aren't. And we're also going to grab a viewer node. This you will have to create yourself. OK, so um, the render layer is basically just what's going to be rendered, right? Uh, so if I stick this into here to the viewer, this will allow me to see whatever is rendered in the viewer. So if I come over here to my image editor, so this will show us now. First, it won't show it to you, right? So I need to also you have to make sure you've selected up here. So if you don't, you've got something else, just look for viewer node. And that will show us whatever we have in here, but you have to have stuff rendered. Now, if I hit play, right, it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything. You have to physically go up render and render image in order to get some data into this that will then show you in the viewer. So bear that in mind. The composite is this is what's actually gonna save your final rendered file. So don't get stuck in like doing a bunch of nodes going into your viewer, think it looks great, and then you hit render and it's only gonna save out whatever's piped into this. So you make sure these are um, piped into the same the same thing. Sometimes what I like to do is grab a reroute node and just plug it in like this so I don't forget. Sorry, I'm ignoring chat. Oh, look, my face is up high. Look at that. That's annoying. Bring that back down. <laughs> I wondered why I felt so, you know. <laughs> All right, so we got our thing going. Now what we can do is um, we're going to shift D, duplicate this render layer, and I'm going to select Right here, you can have this drop down, and I can select my other render layer, Tech Supers. There it is. Ta da! Now, what I can do is I can go, all right, well, let's mix these two guys, and we can grab both of the images and pipe them in, and then stick this one into here. I'm also going to switch this to my image editor viewer so I can see what's going on. And if you click on this little button here, um, this will use the alpha of the second input. So it's using the alpha channel of are super here and it's piping it into here. So the alpha channel is the transparency channel. So it, it means it's going to take um, like if I if I go to another frame here and I turn this off, you see we're going to lose everything. It's because it's not using the alpha channel. It's not using any of the transparency from this shot. But if I turn this on, it is. All right. So now let's let's finish our setup. So I'm going to come back over into my tech super shot. All right. Follow me closely. You ready? We're going to have video sequencer. Make sure you've got sequence preview selected, sequencer and preview. I'm going to drag this up so we've got a little bit more room. And then drag this down. Go to the beginning of your timeline. It helps as well sometimes to pull this up and grab your timeline. Just tuck that right here so you can easily control. And I'm going to hit Shift A in my timeline. Go to Scene and Hero Scene. So you can never input in the timeline the scene that you're in. That scene you can never put in the timeline a sequencer timeline for that scene, but you can put the, all the other scenes in, right? So watch, when I do this, I can now see my previous scene here in the view. And then what I can do is I can come to view, and right here, scene strip display, I can set this to rendered, right? It's gonna show me the rendered scene from my other scene, and I press play, I am getting an update in my sequencer. So the sequencer is somehow able to reference a live render from both. So I can find a frame now where I've got, uh, you know, the bit that I want. And I can come over here to my 3D viewer. And now I can actually position this. And you can see it's actually coming out quite large. And it's a little bit weird. I'm not sure why that's doing that. And you have to like refresh it. So I've got to move forward a frame. I'm not exactly sure why the frames aren't matching up. That's a bit weird, but whatever. Now what we're doing is we're compositing, right? This scene on top of this scene in Blender. And if I go back to my first scene and render things out, it's going to render both the shots and put them together for me. And this is really powerful because if you want to have something like text that's not interacting with your scene, or you want to have an element that's not going to interact with your main scene and put them together, you can do it this way. And by using the sequencer like this, where you just import your first scene into your sequencer strip of the second scene, you're going to be able to see whatever is happening in your compositing node in real time. Well, not in real time. It's going to be very slow, but 
you can see it. So you can get updates and you can position things and get stuff set up right so that it looks the way you want it to. Um, and you can get really complex chains in your compositor, which is really powerful and very cool for doing some super neat stuff. So anyways, I hope you found this really helpful. I hope that uh, you can use this trick in your own projects and uh, hopefully it starts to demystify a little bit uh, the idea of using the compositor and bringing in multiple scenes together. Now, I mean, there's a lot that you can do with this. So for as another example, in a different shot in this same project, I had a scene where I had a lot of materials on in my scene. It was a really complex scene with a lot of detail. And I needed that scene to transition into something like this. Where it was just this plain white world where it was just like one shader on everything. And what I did was actually set up two scenes. Uh, I did this exact same stuff in the same in two scenes. And I had one scene that had all the deta detail textured. And I had the other one that was just the one white shader on everything. And then I made a third scene that was nothing but a black and white gradient that was across everything that I could animate. And I used that scene to drive the, the factor of my mix input between those first two scenes. So the final effect was you have this really detailed scene and then suddenly there's this wipe that moves through 3D space that transitions it from the detailed to the really plain uh, white world uh, scene. And it was a really effective uh, result. And I was able to keep everything kind of in Blender and just do it without having to go out to any kind of compositing software, which is very, very powerful. So uh, have a play around with it yourself and hopefully you'll be able to find some cool use cases for this. And I hope you found this helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really helps it grow. And uh, please consider checking out the Patreon. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, there's a whole um, longer section. So like the full record was this is a 30 minute uh, long session live stream that I did. And um, you can check that out on the Patreon if you join. And also as uh, YouTube channel members get access to it as well. Plus you can get this project file if you join Patreon at the second level this month uh, or uh, next month. So it's, it's always whenever you join, you get this month, the current month and the previous month's project files. And that's it. So and every month you stay on, you get that, that month's project files. And you just, it just keeps kind of going through so you can start to collect the project files. So um, if you're interested in that, hop over there and check that out as well. So thank you again for checking it out and for watching this and for engaging with the channel. Don't forget to jump in the Discord. We hang out there all the time. A lot of cool stuff. We're doing now monthly competitions. Um, and we're going to start highlighting those uh, in a stream once a month. So that could be a lot of fun. The link is in the description below. And um, don't forget as well, the Gumroad and the Blender Market. We've got some cool stuff over there for you. We've got stuff everywhere. Go check it out. Have a fantastic week. I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.